Hey guys, Az Samet here. Welcome to episode 11 of the Ask Az show. Uh, in today's episode, I'll be sharing some ideas on guitar fingerings, talking about um, how different fingerings can change your experience when you want to solo and when you want to improvise. And I'll also be talking about picking patterns, um, how some picking patterns may be easier for certain things. Also, I'll be talking a little bit about soloing on Chick Corea's Spain. I've played the song over the years and I finally like really looked at it even closer than before. I mean, I learned how to play the play over the changes. I've learned the melody before, but this time I just like, you know, I decided I'm going to go all out and actually really study it. So today I spent some time looking at the song and so I'm going to share it. Um, some of the ideas that I got, some of the tips that I have, so that in case you guys like uh, the Chick Corea song Spain, you can get some insight from it. Maybe it can help you guys learn the song and uh, you can also improvise and play on it better. So that's the kind of the focus for today. Uh, if you guys are watching this, please type out, um, say hello, or like if you're watching this from your phone, you know, maybe tap the hearts and the wows and let me know where you guys are watching this from because I'm always curious who's watching and where you're watching this from. I'm always curious from your phone, from your house, from Sabah, Sarawak, KK, Kota Kinabalu. I'm always curious. So please type out where you're watching this from and just give me a sec as I share. I'm trying to share the, just need to share the link here real quick. So please type hello, type where you're from, where you're watching this from. I would love to know. And in a bit, I'll go into the topic for today so you guys can benefit from this. Kota Kinabalu, awesome. Hello, Sazali. Thanks for tuning in. You're so awesome. You always tune in for this. Thank you. And let me just share this. I just need to click share on two places and then we can start. Again, so if you guys have any questions about like fingering or picking pattern or picking technique or uh, finger style technique, um, today is the right day to ask me because I just want to kind of focus on this topic. I decided I've been doing this for 11 days. Lah. Um, so... Let me answer Vigna Swaran's question. Please explain to me how to start learning other modes. I can only apply the major scale rather than minor over chord progression. What is essential to start? I look at it like this, you know. When you're talking about modes, right? Modes is a huge thing. Like I said, when I teach it, it takes like six to nine hours. And that's like the basics. So within this, I'll show you what is the very, very basic. The, the, the way I look at modes is this, okay? Let's say you take a chord. Yeah, click, click on the hearts, click on the wows and stuff. Pick a chord that you want. Let's say you want to learn C major. What are the possible modes? So the first thing is I want to know on this chord, I want to know what modes are possible. But before I know what mode is possible, I want to know what is the arpeggio. So what's the arpeggio? It's going to be C major 7. Now that means there's four notes, right? C, E, G, B, C, E, G, B. So you've got four notes. In a mode, there's usually four plus three, the seven notes. So what notes do I have as choices to add to that C major seven? I can add a nine. That's now a kind of a pentatonic scale, a different kind of pentatonic scale. I can add the 6 or the 13. Now it's called a hexatonic scale. It's a 6 note scale. Now the only difference between a major scale, Ionian, and a Lydian is one note. It's either F, which is the 4th note, or F sharp. One note difference. So if I want to play and I want a very plain major sound, I would have an F. Now 
Now, sometimes people like think it's lame to use Ionian or major. Actually, it's not. It's just a nice sound. It's actually hard to solo using Ionian properly. It's e sometimes it's easier with... Well, actually, Ionian and Lydian, I think, are very hard to solo. Nice, to solo nicely. So, do not underestimate it. But you have the... Then you have Lydian. Lydian is instead of F natural, you have an F sharp. See if you have that? It's like like brighter, it's more mysterious. Okay, so you have those two colors. Now, if you want to go out on this chord. There's another scale you can use, and it's from the melodic minor scale. It's a mode of melodic minor. Instead of having a C major 7, you can have a C major 7 sharp 5. This starts getting out. Because now, instead of Lydian, the G now becomes G sharp. Now, this is called a Lydian augmented scale. One way of looking at it is like that. One, two, three, four, sharp four, sharp five, six, major seven root. Right, you can use that. Or you can think of it as a A melodic minor. Over a C major seven, sharp five. Okay, so what am I saying here? I'm saying that you pick one chord and you start examining what are the possible scales on one chord. C major, what can I use? I can use Ionian, I can use Lydian, I can use Lydian Augmented. There's another scale you can use, which is called um, Ionian, um, let me think. It's Ionian Sharp 5, which is a mode of A, melod a harmonic minor. I have I don't really use this one that much. But you could use it. So how many do you have? Ionian, you have Lydian, you have Lydian augmented, you have Ionian sharp five. There's one more you can use. It's called harmonic major. It's one, two, three, four, five, flat six. Major 7. Mm. Now, at this point, I want to say that a lot of people always want to learn about modes. But actually, you might not actually even know Ionian really well or Lydian really well. It starts becoming a very long list of skills. Ionian. Lydian, Lydian Augmented, Ionian Sharp 5, Harmonic Major. The question is, you have to ask yourself, do you know the fingering? Can you hear the sound? And how much of these kind of melodies have you transcribed? How many players can you listen to and say, he's using Lydian, that guy's using Lydian Augmented. So first you learn the scale, and then you have to, you don't be, I want to say, don't be so greedy to learn everything at once. Maybe learn Lydian, spend, one week to three months exploring Lydian so you can hear the sound and get really good at it. Or a few years, you know. But don't get stuck not exploring the sounds, you know. But think of one chord and go through the colors and pick the ones you like and practice those. That's what I would recommend. Strawa, awesome. Hello, hello, Kairi. Hi, hi, Manolito. Hi, Zabin Kamarudin. Ultimate, man, ultimate is in the house. The man.
Others you can't. You know what? The Avina Shoran, if others you tak knowledge tak power sangat sebab topik ni susah. So knowledge you tak, it's not about knowledge tau. It's about application. Benda ni kan, you have to play on the guitar. So, uh, and I wish I can, benda ni if like, we need to have interaction and I don't know, I don't know how much theory you tahu, I don't know how well you play, I don't know how much fingering you know, I don't know how well you hear. So it's very difficult to to show this without knowing how your playing actually is. Because I can show you every single mode that I know. I can show you all the fingerings that I know. But it can just be macam, benda tu jadi show off. It's just like, I just show you all these things can to show like, oh, I knows a lot of skills. But to apply it, it's not so much of after you know the fingering you can apply. You actually have to spend some time. So let's say for example, I say, this is Lydian augmented, right? You have to sit down and like say, okay, one, two, three, shuffle, shuffle, do, re, mi, fi, si, la, di, do, di, la, si, fi, mi, re, do, re, mi, fi, si, ti, no, si, la, ti, ti. I sing, I'm singing wrongly, do, re, mi, out of tune. Do re mi fi si la ti do. So you have to sing until you, until you start matching it and you're in tune. If you cannot hear it right, benda ni jadi mechanical. It becomes a mechanical thing. It's not practical. So one is learning how to play it and then learning how to hear it. So you want to try to develop that together. Um, but that's the basic of it. Okay, next one. Uh, anyone has any questions related to that? That was a very good question, Venus Warren. Thanks. Yeah, you play for you, you might sound okay. Record yourself, post up videos of your playing online. If you haven't done that yet, post it up. That's how you get feedback. If it sucks, someone's going to tell you it sucks. If it's good, someone's going to tell you it's good. If it's okay, no one's going to comment on anything. The internet is like, you know, very practical. People hate your playing, they tell. People like your playing, sometimes they tell. People, your playing is okay, no one tells anything. Family will say your, your playing is amazing sometimes, even though it sucks. So, but that's how you grow. You, wanna, you have to put yourself out there in order to know whether you're good or not. And sometimes it might be completely wrong anyway, but hey. That's how we learn, you know, we one by one, step by step, okay? So that's the tip. So great question. Now let me go into the topic of guitar fingerings. I really want to share this because I've been, um, that song, Chick Corea song, Spain, right? The fingering is freaking hard, man. It's just freaking hard. I wish I could tell you guys that it's so easy to play. No, it's not. It's not very practical for guitar. So what do I do? I checked out Guthrie Govern's fingerings for it. I checked out uh, Tom Quill, but Tom Quill uses a different tuning for it. I checked out uh, Jack Tamarat's fingering for it. I checked out Ar Armon, Armand Musafian's fingering for it. I checked out the guy, uh, uh, who's the guy? Um, Matteo Mancuso, is it? He, he's, um, let me get the guy's name correct. I checked out the guy from Snips. I don't even, yeah, I don't remember his name. But let me check his. He he has a killer version of the song, but they they changed the melody. Matteo Matteo Mancuso Mancuso, amazing player. So I checked out all these players. Sama sama. You have to get over the malu thing. I mean, you don't have to. I'm not gonna force you to put stuff online. Tapi kalau you nak improve, right? And you want if you wanted to be a performer, start putting stuff up. That's how you grow. And if it sucks take it off after that. But I would recommend putting it out to get feedback, you know. If you're shy, put it on private or put it on, but if you're really serious, put it public, okay? Okay, this is the story. So the melody for Spain, right, there's one phrase. The first phrase, right, goes. Which is an interesting phrase because it's like, that's a third. 
That's also third B and D. Third as well. So you have and then third as well. So in a way, right, the pattern here is So there's actually a sequence happening here, which makes it actually quite interesting. That's why it's very memorable. And but the actual timing for the recording is. And that's the question is, my question is like, how the hell do you do this? Like, how do you figure out the fingering for the right hand? So you have to do like, Alternate. Then. Then. So I tend to use, do downward pick slanting when I can get a better tone. But here I have to alternate. Alternate pick slanting. goes after that is kind of it's just a scale going up so it's not too too crazy and the same thing by going then it goes down so that whole thing right is still going up then again the same thing going up then down and up. So that part is not difficult. That's not a physically demanding part in terms of picking. But the first part was both rhythmic. No, I'm sorry. This is it. That's how I would practice it. I would actually practice it. And notice another thing I do. This is a very... Um, Forgot the guy's name, but I basically try not to do bars when I do this melody. It's all individual fingers. Then. that part is okay but after that right it starts getting interesting because here is the part where everyone if you haven't done it yet right it's very easy to mess this up i messed it up so many times now i i told myself today i was like i'm finally not gonna mess this up anymore i'm actually gonna learn it properly and get it over with because gosh darn it like Gatri govern plays it tom queer plays the song uh jack tamarat plays the song Martin Miller plays the song. Matteo, Matteo Mancuso plays the song. Obviously, Chick Corea plays the song. It's like a jam song that everyone that, that is like a great... I mean, all these crazy guitarists, they all call the song because it's kind of a cool song. But I never learned it. Really, 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 really learned it. So I told myself, I should really get this over with and done and learn properly so that I can finally jam with these people when I get to jam with like Jack Tamarat again or if when I do when I meet Tom Quill at least I can actually say let's play Spain and I actually know the melody you know that's the point about learning all the songs is like if you know that your favorite guitarist can play it might as well learn it so that when the time comes to jam you can actually say yeah let's play Spain or Gatri Gavin or something I can actually say yes I can play Spain with you because I learned it so it's not easy it's a hard tune but let's go Talk about some more. So the next part of the melody, right? Initially, I learned the melody here. That's the first phrase. And I noticed Jack Tamarat plays it somewhere around here. I'm not sure about his fingering exactly, but he plays it around here. I learned it here. Then I realized I checked out Gatri Gavin. Gatri plays it here, you know. And I think it's easier here in terms of the finger. So everything's within the four frets, you know. 
hear, right, it's like a bit like acrobatic a bit. Because it's actually not within the four frets. It's actually within five frets because the C sharp is here and the G is here. So actually, I have to shift. If you watch this, right. Shift. Shift. Then. Then here. So there's a five five fret position now here. Still four fret. Here, fifth first time there's a shift. Now this is an interesting part. I actually like to do it here. But I realized that Jack Tamara, Gatri Gavin, they play here. And I have the feeling they're trying to avoid string, um, not string, uh, string skipping. Because here, right, it's actually only between five and four. Then you get the octave there. If I do it here, I actually have to do and then skip, then skip again. Uh, so I have to go from five and four, and then five and three, then four and one. So that makes it very easy to miss the notes because it's hard. It's actually like quite tricky string crossing. It's great for string crossing exercise, you know. String uh, string skipping. But if you did it here, this is not too bad because it's a standard octave thing. So that's what I'm guessing. This is this is just my guess by the way. Because I thought about it and I was trying to figure out why did Gatri play it there? Why did why did Jack Tamara play there? Um, what's more interesting is if you check out Tom Quill's fingering, right? He actually plays it low because he's playing like in a rock kind of thing. Like really riff. So he's playing it like low register, but he's also tuned in fourths. So I cannot follow his fingering on the top part right? because on the third string and the second string he's he's in a different he he uses a different fingering. So I cannot copy him there. But the, the bottom half I can copy the fingering, that's fine. But I thought if Gatri, the maestro himself, was playing here, then this must be a good fingering for it, which is why I, I started off here. So here also because it's like thicker strings, right? It's actually not so melodic sounding. It sounds more riff. Same difficulty here. If you look at the right hand, right? The picking pattern, right? It gets this. That's hard. If you did it the Jack Tamara or the Gachi. That's actually easier. So I think I, I'm gonna go with what Jack and Gatri played. Because I think that they're really good players and their fingerings make sense to me. So I'm gonna go with that. Uh, so it's um, I that one I need to practice too, but Sorry, one. Mm. Uh, sorry, uh, I need to get it. So, if you mess up like me, what I just did, like I messed it up there, play slower. Good, that's the first phrase, right? Get it again. So, I'm showing you guys how well we practice this. And this is a 
this is a trick for you guys. It's a practice trick. Don't, you know how they say metronome, put the metronome low, put it up by a notch, five notch, 10 notch, you know, no, skip. Go from really super slow, clean, jump to the performance tempo. Why is that? Because you will have the feeling of how the picking has to be at the actual tempo. Not a lot of people will say that, but you ask Martin Miller, I think he will say the same thing. Then the next part, so that's the first bit of I love that line. Then then she That's it. That's basically the melody. For years I suffered in agony and defeat and stupidity for not learning how to play it properly. But all you needed to do, well, all I needed to do was actually sit down for a while, really listen to the original recording. And now we're so lucky because we have freaking YouTube, right? You can actually go on YouTube and check out like 10 versions of it and figure out what everyone's doing and try to figure out who are the geniuses that have figured out the best fingering and spend three, four, five hours and then just figure out, follow whatever they're doing and then practice. So now, after I have decided that this is a good fingering, what do I do? So I will actually just maybe learn phrase by phrase. So I might do. Sorry, so wrong right. So start again. Good, that's the first phrase. Right? Then what's the next phrase? So there's two parts there. First part is. So two phrases right then. So. Then it goes to back to the second half of the third phrase. That's interesting. I actually like that one a lot. It's actually voice-led. It's like, oh man, I can't play it, but this is what it does. Then, can't even play it properly, but this is what it is. It's basically a voicing, right? It goes from, then it goes to, so it's voice leading there. And here, Jack Tamara and Jatri Gavin for you. And you're set. That's the fingering. That's the fingering I'm sticking with for now. So, uh, what's the moral of the story? Learn a song, learn the melody really well, figure out the best fingerings for it. The fingering, I wish when I started out, I wish someone told me fingering, how important finding the right fingerings are. Because if not right, I can, it's nearly impossible to play this clean at tempo with relaxed technique, with bad fingering. So a lot of times if you cannot play really fast, you might just have horrible fingerings for it. So, okay, so that's that point so far. Guys, do you have any questions about that before I go to the next part? Any questions about guitar fingering, picking patterns, things like that? Kalau ada nak tanya dalam bahasa Melayu pun boleh tanya. Jangan malu-malu. Please ask me any questions about that. Because after this, I want to go to uh, show you guys how to solo on Spain. Okay, so no questions. That's cool. Okay, so the thing about Spain, right, Chicoria Spain, is actually, this one is, if Witness Warren, if you're here, right, you, this is where you get to, I'm going to show you guys the mode stuff that's related, the scale stuff and the mode stuff and all that. So the chord progression for the song, right, it goes from G major 7 to F sharp, uh, 7 sharp 5. Then it goes to E minor 7, 
two five one A seven D major seven G major seven. Then it goes to C sharp seven sharp nine F sharp seven. I think it goes to B minor and B seven, but let me check. Uh, because the melody goes. Sorry. Uh, uh, then it goes to. Da, 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 da. Then it goes to B seven, so B binary to B seven there. So what is are the scales or the arpeggios or the modes here? So G major seven. This is the fingering that I'll be using. What I usually use. G major seven. I do this here. So it's just F sharp G, B D, F sharp G, B D, F sharp G. Fingering one. Another fingering that I like is this one. Then. Okay, that's the G major seven. G, B, D, F sharp, first finger, then third finger, G, B, D, F sharp, G, B. That's what I mean with the fingering thing. If you get the right fingering, right? Uh, if you watch my right hand, how I'm doing the picking. So there's a lot of economy picking nowadays. I didn't used to economy pick so much, but sorry. Oh here. See that down, up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, sweep up. Okay, so that's the G major seven. Okay, now the scale is I'm gonna use a Lydian mode. So what's the fingering for the Lydian mode? I would use this. So two, four, one, three, four, one, three, four, and then here. So notice that when I learn my modes, right, or any scale fingering, I always learn one octave at a time, then I learn the second octave. Because I want to hear the stuff. I tak nak pakai this just for... Good night, Faiz. Thanks for tuning in. I don't want to just play it as a fingering. I want to hear the stuff. So if you guys have been learning stuff by tap, right, and not actually hearing the sound, you're missing out on the real music stuff. The real music stuff is being able to play it and also being able to hear what you're playing to really know the sound connecting that one plucking mom's teen. i don't know any mom's teen bro <laughs> i wish i did i did i don't really know i have like the the stuff i i can play right which is it's not even like the mom's teen stuff really it's all like <laughs> Like I use the picking technique because I learned it from the Chris Brooks stuff. What, uh, what uh, Chris Brooks calls the Ng which is, um, what does he call it? He has a name for it. 
I got his new book, which is really cool, Advanced Arpeggio Soloing for Guitar. Haven't really learned it, because I just got it a few days ago. But he has a name for the picking pattern. He calls it the picking technique, the, that, that method of thinking of the, the picking directions and the movement. Apa dia panggil? Just say. He does it in the scale section of the book because he talks about people using arpeggios. Then when you go into combining arpeggios and scales, the technique just disappears. Not very good. Like it's not like not connected together. Let's see if I can find the second chapter that he did. Okay, I need to look at I need to look at the table of contents, right? You have a book, you should look at the table of contents. Wise. Uh, ah, yeah, it's 58. It's called Merging Skills. Uh, he calls it compound picking. Compound picking. Compound picking when you, you do the Momstein kind of uh, picking technique. Yes, every mode sounds different. For guitarists, you must know what we like so we can apply. That's why you want to learn modes. Yeah, man. Where are you, man? Uh, are, you, are you in KL? If you're in KL, take lessons with me. <laughs> Or you, uh, I do have a modes course that I offered last year. I will be offering it again. I just don't know when. It's most likely the earliest is after Chinese New Year lah, because I still need to edit the videos. Uh, but that if you take the course, that will be very good. Or if you take private lessons with me, that also be very good. We would cover the stuff more detail. Uh, but in general, when you're trying the stuff on your own, right, one mode at a time and be able to sing it. If you cannot sing it right, you're missing out on some parts of understanding the sound. It's not essential, but I think it's like quite important. Lah. Like getting your technique together and getting your ears together, it, it's really helpful. Okay, now let's go back. So first one was Lydian, right? Now the next one is F sharp 7 here, right? The, the scale I would use is probably altered. Altered would be a mode of melodic minor. So it's so G melodic minor. So G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And then same thing. G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F sharp, G. So this is the sound. Huh? So it's very colorful. Alternate pick the whole thing here. Hey Ray, how are you doing? So so the first part was Lydian. Here alter. Then it goes to E minor 7. So this is Dorian, which is basically D major. A7 is also still uh, D major, but it's called A mixo. Then D major is D major, D major, this is Ionian. G, same Lydian, which is still D major. Here it changes. Here is C, C sharp seven sharp nine, and I would use D melodic minor. So you have or D melodic minor, which is C sharp altered. goes to F sharp 7 altered and then it goes to B minor what can I do that? B natural minor which is still D major now it changes to B7 what can I do there so it's actually B mixolydian flat 13 Which is basically like G major if we raise the fifth. 
So it's like G Lydian sharp five or G Lydian sharp five. Uh, so it's actually E, e uh, melodic minor. So. Uh, So it's really important when you learn all these uh, kind of modes, right? Actually, what you need to learn is the major scale and the melodic minor scale, maybe the harmonic minor scale. Major scale, melodic minor, harmonic minor. Between those three, right, you actually will learn essentially all the other modes, but not know that you've learned it yet because it's all like they're all subsets it's the same notes but it's just the color is different so fingerings will be different but essentially it's there anyway can you and that's all the scales for spin Vignes Suaran, Puchong Shah Alam Damansar. I really want to take less than my hours or a few weeks prior. Yeah, let me know, man. Uh, we can do it via Skype, man. If you are, if you, if it's like, or Skype or even Facebook, um, Facebook video call. Because if you, let's say traveling is a problem, you can, and this goes out to anyone. If any one of you guys wants to take a lesson with me and we are not, you're not in KL or you might not want to travel to Bangsa to take the class, we can do it via Skype or via Facebook video. Um, those are the most two popular ones. I used to do a lot more Skype via Skype, but now Facebook video, the streaming is impeccable. That's really good. Um, if you have a Mac, then FaceTime works as well. I tend to favor Facebook video because the streaming is actually really good when you just have a chat one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Skype's fine as well. But uh, yeah, so Skype and Facebook video are the main ones. So you don't have to travel here. We can actually do it via video. And the good thing is I get to see how you play and I get to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. So this goes out to Vic Naswara. And anyone who wants to study with me, we can do it via Skype or FaceTime or Google Hangout. Uh, I've done that before, Google Video call or something um, so check it out and although the most optimum is actually if if we get to work together let's say you we take class you take classes with me and we do it every single week like once a week that's the most optimum and depends how long you can do it you know if you can study with, if I, we can work together and you study with me for one year or two years or three years you're gonna get a lot of improvement because we can work through like every single detail of your playing from technique to ear training to sound to fingering to understanding theory to understanding harmony to reharmonization to understanding chord progressions in major scale minor scales to learning jazz standards to how to memorize melodies to solving technical problems picking problems finger style technique uh, and like analyzing chord progressions modes there's so many topics that you we can cover and the, the longer we have time to work together we can go into it more detail um, but obviously, if you know, if either budget or time is a concern, even if you guys can take like a lesson with me one on one, like once a month, it's still going to be better than zero. I mean, the Facebook Live thing, you you guys have me here. Facebook Live um, goes out. You know, I'm trying my best to do it uh, every day now. So this is episode eleven of the Ask Al Show. So this is this is here for you guys. I'm trying my best to keep it every single day. But when we do one on one, we we can cover more detail, and I get to see your playing, and uh, like we can critique and improve those things. So that goes out. So anyone who wants to uh, interested, DM me. Okay. Now uh, I wanted to say the soloing thing. So okay. So now you guys know what the scales are, right? Um, let me actually uh, turn on the backing track so you can hear the uh, the chord progression. I'll, I'm using iReal Pro. Uh, I'll turn off the chords and maybe keep the bass line and find a version of Spain so I can improvise over it, maybe narrate a little bit uh, what's happening. So this is just going to be for the soloing bit. So I'm going to change and put on the Bluetooth speakers so it actually will play through my speakers and you can hear the backing track and hear my guitar as well. So
I real pro. Okay, speakers are connected. Let me check whether the preferences are the right setting. I love the setting, turn it off, spins on. Let me test the volume first, whether it works. I'm gonna turn off the chords because I don't like the maybe a little bit lah. Okay. I don't like the chords, man. Maybe I should change it to like a road or something. Maybe roads too. Let me try again with the roads, how maybe the patch will be better. Yeah, I actually like the road sound better. It's not so annoying. Okay, cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually prefer personally because it's better. Yeah, um, yeah, check it out, man. Check out your schedule, um, and um, we'll we'll figure out the timing. You know, we we can do it like uh, it's better to if we can figure out a time that we can keep it regularly happening. But if not, we we'll figure something out, man. Just just sort uh, check out your schedule and uh, like let's try to work something out. It'd be great to work work together and develop develop your playing because you have a you you, you want to study modes and that's something that I can help you definitely uh, and definitely if we study private one on one it'll be like the best la it's the best like, that's the best capacity that I can help you so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn on the backing track I'm gonna try to solo over it first and then maybe talk about it a little bit okay so I want to make sure you guys can see both the left hand and right hand so you guys can see what happens. <laughs> Okay, cool. Let me play it and try to jam over it.
So something like that. Okay. So this is interesting because like when uh, when I told you guys the scale fingerings or like the modes I'm using, right? When I actually play, I actually use some other modes as well because what what feels right in performance and habits, finger habits and stuff are slightly different. Um, so I'll tell you guys what I actually use, which are actually subsets of the thing. So on the G major seven, that's like. So some of the things I like to use there are actually just same like I told you the G major 7 arpeggio. But I also like to use this. I didn't use it just now but I actually really like it. D, try it. I actually like that a lot because you, when you play a G major 7 but you play D. It just sounds really nice because you get the major seven, the nine, and the fifth. So you did that. That's one, two, three, five. I also did uh, another triad pair thing, G, and play A major. So G major triad, A major triad, G major triad, A major triad, G major triad. So that's another thing you can use. You don't necessarily have to use just uh, the, the the mode going up and down. You can use I I use a lot of arpeggios and triad pairs to make it sound Lydian, but not just play the scale. So that's one of the things I use. Um, here, right, the altered thing. I actually like to use the arpeggio itself. So G minor major seven. So to me, that sounds pretty. Again, you can see my, my whole picking pattern here. Down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up. I didn't used to do so much sweeping, but but it's just like, I, I, I watch like people like Armin Mosesian, uh, Frank Gambale, and when some of these things, right, when you do sweeps, it actually flows better. The timing is a bit like, Timing is a bit harder to articulate clearly. It takes a bit of work. But in terms of like the right hand, right, it moves like in a pretty way. To me that works really well. On the Dorian side here. And then there's a bebop thing that I usually it's like kind of a Pat Matini thing. Here, right, even though it's A7, it's supposed to be mixed, so... I actually often change it into alter. And sometimes I change it into diminish. So it becomes like... Um, I use this fingering one, two, four, one, three, four, one, two, four. Oh, sorry. Yeah, one, two, four, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, two, four. One, two, four, one, two, four. And that's like a nice sound. Mm. This is actually the fingering I like. I like I like this fingering a lot more. I use three, four. Three, four. So you can see it. Three, four. One, two, four, four. One, two, four, four. One, two, four. One, three, four. One, two, four. It's because it actually starts here. So in context, right? So D major 7, I play D major 7 arpeggio. Uh. Uh. 
G major seven, G major seven. Here C sharp seven, yeah, it's alter. Or D melody minor. Here alter again. Yeah. And then B minor is just same B minor. Mm. Uh, B7 with a C natural. Yeah. So those are the sounds I use. Those are the, so there's a lot to digest. There's a lot of scales. There's a lot of modes. But when when learning these things, I don't. I didn't learn everything at once. I learned one thing at a time. So maybe learn G major seven. What can I do on G major seven? Another day, maybe you learn what can I do on F sharp seven, and then slowly combine F sharp seven and G major seven. That's how you kind of learn more and more of these things. So I know there's six of you guys here. Um, any question, guys? Any questions about skills modes? I know this this today's episode is kind of heavy, uh, but I wanted to give you guys a lot of stuff that um, you can watch this video again and again and digest it even more. I think this is going to be a video that can help a lot of people, especially if you really watch it, take notes, and write it down. I want to give you guys good stuff. Um, this is what I would teach anyway. If you took private lessons one on one, I would teach you this kind of things. Um, maybe maybe more detail and maybe like get you guys to play it right now i cannot see how you guys play this um but that's the info so any questions fitness swaran or you are as ray if you guys have any questions i'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to maybe type out any questions Okay, so there's no questions. So, okay, I think I'm going to call it a night and I'll end by putting on the backing track again, maybe jam out um, and close it with a jam, man. Um, so this is, again, the Ask Us Show episode 11. Let me share with you guys uh, things that you guys, if you guys want to get more stuff from me, let me give you the link to some things. Um, two things. If you want to get every single ebook I've released, if you want to own every single ebook that I've released, there's four so far, five lesson packs, nine, uh, nine extra things. It's in the 2019 Guitar Success Bundle. It's basically a collection of four ebooks, five lesson packs, and nine bonuses. It goes for $60, it's 240 ringgit. But it, and it comes with a lot of stuff. So if you guys are looking for some like some way to, if you want to practice with my material, but maybe cannot take private lessons at this point, that is your best bet. There's so much stuff in there. It's uh, it's the same material that I give my students as well. So if you get that, you can actually practice the same kind of licks, the same kind of skills, the same kind of voicing ideas, the same kind of exercises that my students get, private students get. And it's still cheaper than a one hour lesson with me. But there's a lot of stuff there you can use for a whole year. Um, another thing that you can get to, if you have never bought anything from me and you're thinking about it, there is this thing called the Super Saver Jazz Guitar Bundle that is at an affordable $1, one US dollar, four ringgit, and you get 50 licks, 50, five, zero guitar licks, jazz guitar licks. And you also get two uh, mini ebooks as a bonus as well. So that's like four ringgit. So it's like, I don't know, two Teo Ice Limau in my neighborhood. Or like uh, one roti chanai, one roti chanai, no, one, one roti kosong and one Teo Ice Limau and maybe something else. Or maybe two roti chanai. And you get 50 licks. So that's a lot more than what you can get. The roti chanai won't last you that long. So if you guys want to, if you guys enjoyed the broadcast um, and you want to get more, check those out, own those things, buy them. Uh, I, I believe they, they, those things can help you out a lot uh, in terms of practicing. If you really practice the stuff, if you work on it, don't just buy it, work on it, practice it. Um, and if you enjoyed the video, please click like, click heart, click thumbs up, click wow. There's hearts and wows and things like that. Um, like my page, share this video with your friends, tag your friends, tolong tag kawan-kawan yang mungkin 
minat belajar gitar, minat modes, minat belajar jazz, tolong tag kawan-kawan in the comment section. In fact, right now, if you can help me out, tag one friend in the comment section to check it out. It would mean the world to me. Okay. So, kalau tak ada soalan, sama-sama sekali. Okay. So, kalau tak ada, and also click share. Share this with your friends. Okay, guys, I'm going to wrap up and jam over the track a little bit. I'm going to set the repeat so that it's X number or something, maybe eight times, and then close it with that. Check the tuning first. Okay, we're good. That's jam. Oh, the audio is not happening. I'm going to die again, one time.
Something like that. Okay, guys, that was today's episode, the Ask Us show. That was episode 11, where we talked about guitar fingerings, we talked about picking technique, we talked about soloing on spin. Uh, we also, I also answered some questions about modes. Talked about Ionian, Lydian, Lydian augmented, Ionian sharp five, um, harmonic major scale, and we also talked about. Why did I know there's one more question that we talked about just now? Uh, private lessons. So yeah, so that was today's broadcast. So um, thanks so much for watching, guys. I will try my best my very best to try to do another episode tomorrow probably around the same time maybe maybe like 10 30 11 at night or something uh we'll see how it goes but i will aim for that okay um so thanks so much for watching again if you want to get the any of the things that i mentioned there the guitar success bundle the link is in the comment section and also the super saver jazz guitar bundle is in the comment section as well tell your friends about the show and see you guys again in the next episode Take care, guys. Good night.